Jerry of the Circus. for Jerry of the Circus. Well, Sergeant, the boy's locked up for the night, but I doubt if he'll sleep much. Taking it pretty hard, poor kid. I sure hate to lock up a youngster like that. Yeah, seems like a nice enough kid, too. Bad business, though, letting a young boy like that loose on the streets at night. Sure was funny how he kept insisting he belonged to the circus. <laughs> I almost believed him. <laughs> Might have believed him myself if I hadn't remembered that report. Yeah, that O'Brien woman sure described him. I guess he's the boy she's looking for, all right. He was probably hoping to skip with the circus when it pulled off tonight. Poor kid. It was a pretty good story, he told. Yeah, but not quite good enough. Hello. Are you the sergeant? Yes, sir. Jason's my name. I'm with the Randall Brothers Circus. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for one of our boys. Can't seem to find him anywhere, and our train leaves in just 20 minutes. Can you give me some help? What kind of a boy? What's his name? He's just a youngster. His name's Jerry Dugan. Jerry Dugan? Yeah, have you seen him? Seen him? <laughs> we got him locked up. Locked up? For what? What's he done? Well, we're not sure that he's done anything, but Officer Rooney here picked him up a little while ago. He was roaming around town whistling for his dog. Well, there's no harm in that, is there? No, but I checked through the missing persons files and find the answer to the description of a boy a woman has preferred charges against, a Mrs. O'Brien. Charges against Jerry? For what? Seems he disappeared, or in a board bill. Oh, but the boy belongs with the circus now. Yeah, that's what he said, but... He uh... just joined us today. Mr. Randall, the owner of the circus, can vouch for him. He was a great friend of the boy's father. That's why Randall took Jerry on. Gee, it's late. We've got to make that train. Sorry, but I guess you'll have to stay locked up for the night. Listen, Sergeant, can I see the boy? Just for a minute. I want to make sure he's the right one. Well, all right. Uh, Tom, bring Jerry Dugan in here. Yes, sir. Now listen, Sergeant. Exactly what is the complaint against this boy? Well, this Mrs. O'Brien claims he owes her for a couple of weeks' board and room. Seems she's been trying to get the authorities to find him with the idea of putting him in an orphanage. Orphanage? Jerry? Listen, Sergeant. If I pay the bill in cash... Well, we'll see when it comes up in court tomorrow. But we've got that catch that train in... Good heavens, 15 minutes. Sorry, but I guess I can't help you. But if you'd call this woman on the phone now... At three o'clock in the morning... Oh, I know it's irregular. Irregular? <laughs> it's crazy. Sergeant, supposing you had a son and he was in trouble, but some responsible people wanted to take care of him. Now, if I pay the bill and this woman agrees over the phone to withdraw the charges, well, she won't have any reason to hold him. It sounds simple, but at this hour... Please, Sergeant. It may mean a real future for the boy. I know it's asking a lot, but... It sure is. But by golly, I'll try now, where's her phone number now? Now, let me see. I've got it right here somewhere. Here he is, Sergeant. Jason! Jason! Jerry Dugan. You monkey, what kind of a mess have you gotten yourself into now? Well, I was just looking for rags. I, I had to find him before we left town. I was heading for where we used to live, and... Well, this policeman arrested me. Gosh, look at the time. How about it, Sergeant? Hmm, I don't know. Phone's ringing, but she's probably so sound asleep that... Oh, hello. Hello there, uh, Mrs. O'Brien. Yeah, just a minute, Mrs. O'Brien. Uh, this is the police station. Yeah. I I'm sorry to disturb you at this hour, 
But we've picked up the boy that you preferred charges against, and, uh, well, I... Yes, but, uh, well, n now, now, just a minute, please. Now, there's a man down here who wants to pay the boy's bill, but he's leaving town by train in 15 minutes. Yeah, he, he says he won't pay the bill, though, and unless you agree to withdraw the charges so he can take the boy with him. I say he refuses to pay the money unless you're willing to withdraw the charges. Yes, cash. You agree? All right, then. Come down in the morning, sign the release, and I'll turn the money over to you. And thank you, Mrs. O'Brien. It hung up on me. <laughs> He's a nice customer. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> What's the amount, Sergeant? Well, now, let me see. <clears throat> yeah, well, here it is. Two weeks, room and board, $22. 22 Okay, Sergeant. Here you are. Five and five and ten is twenty and two is twenty-two. <clears throat> All right, sir. Thanks, Sergeant. You've done this boy a favor he'll never forget. Come on, Jerry, quick. You oh, think you'll make the train? We've got to. But but I can't go, Jason. Not without Rags. I, I'd sooner go to the orphanage. But, Jerry, I found Rags. I found him. You you found him? Sure. Where? Patsy took him down to the train. He's there now. Come on, quick. Well, good luck, Jerry. Goodbye, Sergeant, and, and thanks. Only a few minutes. We've got to make that train. I is Rags okay? He didn't get hurt, did he? No, he's all right. Here's the cab, Jerry. Hop in. Driver, back to the station and step on it. Yes, sir. Yeah, Rags is okay, but he must be kind of sick. I tried to feed him several times, but he wouldn't eat. Of course not. He never eats anything unless I give it to him. Dad and I train him like that. Oh, then that accounts for it. I never saw a dog that wouldn't eat if you offered it some meat. Well, where was he, Jason? Where'd you find him? He was having the time of his life digging around there as those ashes after the fire. Oh, gee whiz. And I looked all over for him. I'm sorry I caused you so much trouble. Forget it, Jerry. Any boy that likes his dog that much must have something pretty real, way down deep. Jason, do you think we'll make it in time? Sure, Jerry. Sure we will. We've got to. Here's the station. Here you are. Keep the change. Thank you. Quick, Jerry. We'll have to run for it. Gee, I, I don't think I can make it. You've got to. Here we are. Give me a hand. Come on. Hop up. There you go. Just in time, huh? Oh, boy. Gee, thanks, Jason. I... Come on. Let's get inside. Well, you turned out to be quite a sprinter after all, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, Jason, I was afraid you missed the train. Not us. Hello, Patsy. Where's Rags? You got him? No, I surely have. He's down at the end of the car. Gee, Rags... Rags! Look at that dog run. Rags, you crazy little mutt. Gee, I, I was afraid I'd never see you again. You know, Jason, I do think that dog likes that boy. Mm, I'm sure that boy doesn't like that dog much. <laughs> Rags, if you ever go off like that again, I'll... I'll... Oh, is that so? You don't say. Oh, no. If your face wasn't clean, Jerry, it certainly should be by now. Rag, stop licking his face. You see, he feels just like I do. You, you do see that I couldn't leave him, don't you? Of course we do, Jerry. Well, it's pretty late, though. Don't you think you'd better get some sleep? Remember, we've got to get up bright and early. Well, where am I supposed to sleep? Randall said you were to bunk in with Lawrence and Decker. They have compartment B down there at the end of the car. Yes, and they're probably in bed already. Guess you'd better turn in, Jerry. Aw, oh, gee, can't I sit up a while and talk? Golly, I, I'm so excited, I, I'm sure I can't sleep yet. <laughs> you should be excited. You join a circus, put your dog in an act, and help put out a fire, lose your dog, and, and get in jail all in one day. Well, it's been a big enough day for me. I'm turning in. Oh, oh, excuse me. The Sandman is certainly calling me. Well, see you in the morning. Oh, Say, Jerry. Yeah? I mailed that letter to Dad. 
and asked him if he knew anything about your uncle. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Gee, thanks, Patsy. Good night. Good night, Jerry. Good night, Jason. Good night, Patsy. Well, Jerry, we're on our way. It'll be another year before we play Midvale again. Guess you're not sorry to leave, are you? No, nope, I'm glad. I was awful lonesome after Dad died. I know. But time is a great healer. And you're going to find a lot of happiness, Jerry. You've got a big life ahead of you. Here comes Loren. So he wasn't in his room. Stop growling, Ray. I, I never knew him to growl at anyone like that before. Rags, be happy. Growling at me again, eh? I thought we had good riddance of this dog. Hmm. So you found the kid, too, eh? Yeah, found him just in time to make the train. Hmm. Well, I turn in now. Well, I'll be in soon. Hmm, don't hurry on my account. Where is the spoon? B, D, C, or B. Here it is. This is my old Decker. Decker! What you doing with that gun out? I don't know. I, I told you to keep your hands off that gun. I'm sorry, I... That boy will be in any moment. But you got a craving for guns? You get us in trouble yet. I'm sorry, Lorenz. I'm just looking at it. It's a fine pistol. It will serve the purpose if it is not discovered before we have a chance to use it. Here, I put it away. It won't happen again. It better not. I guess I hide it from the baby who likes to play with God. Now, listen. Decker, get this straight before the kid comes in. Everything will work out if... If what? If we are careful and follow the plan. Now, tomorrow is payday. Yes. Bennett will bring money to the office wagon as usual. Yes. Now, here's what we do. I file the lock from the office wagon. Then I go inside and wait for it. You watch outside, and when... Careful! Do you not knock, huh? Well, I... I... Snoop me at the door, huh? What do you hear? Nothing. I, I just came in. I didn't hear anything. Honest. He wasn't snooping Lorenz. How are you, Jerry? Well, and red. <laughs> Glad they found you? <laughs> Thanks, Decker. I, I guess I better get to bed. Oh, uh, there's your bunk over there. Yeah. Come on, Rags. Up you go. I, I haven't got any pajamas. Guess I'll have to sleep in my shirt tonight. Well, good night. Good night, Jerry. Have a good sleep. Oh, this bed feels good. <laughs> <laughs> 